we will have a presentation of, of our international admission program so that you can know everything about the way uh, to apply and how we process. And after, afterwards, uh, you will have a Q&A session. And then in the second part, each school will present uh, itself in 10 minutes each. So, and in the end, you can ask questions on, the, uh, on each school if you want. And if you want during the, the, the session, during the whole presentation, you can write your question with Q&A se section in the toolbar. We will answer it by writing or directly in the Q&A session. I, I hope it's okay for everyone. So we will wait a little. So hello everyone. So we will begin with the presentation. So Marie-Christine, I give you the floor. Hello everyone. Um, hello everyone. My name is Marie-Christine Berg. I'm the Director of Partnership at the Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech. And I have the pleasure and the honor today to introduce uh, Paris Tech. So we'll spend uh, uh, about uh, 15 minutes with uh, Paris Tech. What is Paris Tech? Uh, what is the, the alliance Paris Tech? What are the characteristics of the um, education? And uh, then uh, we'll continue with uh, the, um, the admission procedure. So first of all, you know Paris Tech, but just to re, uh, reaffirm that uh, Paris Tech is the alliance of the most prestigious graduate schools in engineering and science in France. Paris Tech uh, shares values and uh, mission. So what are our shared values? Our values relate to our identity, uh, identity uh, as a consortium of the most prestigious graduate school of engineering in France. We train uh, the country's future scientific and technical experts and executives. And our mission is to, um, to, to think that uh, leaders that we train can break down the scientific and technological barriers to tackle major challenges, particularly linked to sustainable development, global warming. Uh, we share values within Paris Tech, openness, diversity, diversity uh, excellence, and solidarity. Paris Tech is uh, an alliance, uh, which is composed by uh, seven schools. The oldest one uh, is the Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech, founded in 1747. And the youngest one is Institut d'Optique, founded in uh, 1917. And the, the, um, the, the, the creation, the foundation of uh, each school uh, relates to uh, part of the uh, French history. So the schools are located across Greater Paris uh, in three campuses, uh, downtown Paris, uh, PSL campus uh, gathering uh, Chimie, SPCI, uh, Min, uh, Paris downtown Arrimetier, East Paris, Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech, and South Paris on Sacré campus, Agro Paris Tech, and Institut d'Opsi. It is uh, an alliance gathering the significant number of students, uh, 12,500 uh, students, uh, PhD candidates, uh, 1,500, 1,500 professors. It gathers 30% uh, international students, 90,000 uh, 90, alumni worldwide, and uh, it also gathers uh, about uh, 70 international agreements and uh, 45 laboratories. Mm. Uh, Paris Tech uh, has uh, offers a highly selective and innovative training covering uh, 12 12 disciplines from uh, mathematics application, life sciences, engineering, information and communication sciences and technology, food engineering, earth science, physics, optics, chemistry, energy, material sciences, mechanics, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, transport, economics and social science and advanced statistics. All those disciplines are uh, offered by the school, so you can check which school covers uh, the discipline you'd like to uh, apply for. Um, the organization of the curriculum at, uh, at uh, Paris Tech schools 
is uh, is plugged on the French system, as uh, as you, you should know. So the, the the first cycle, the bachelor cycle, is uh, three years. The master cycle is two years, and uh, then the, the PhD is uh, another three years. So you, as international uh, candidates, you you will join the cohort of students at the master level. Uh, the master level, uh, which leads to the Diploma Ingenieur uh, MSc in Engineering. The MSc in Engineering leads either to uh, industry or to uh, research, uh, continuing on uh, PhD. Uh, the selection in France, you should know, is uh, very competitive at uh, two levels. The first level is after high school. After high school, around 7% of the students uh, uh, are enrolled in a, uh, intensive scientific uh, class preparatoire, uh, take the national uh, competitive uh, exam, and 5% of them are admitted in one of the schools of Paris State. This is a guarantee of employability, where we claim 100% employability either to uh, either at industry or uh, a significant part of them pursuing a PhD. So uh, the objective of our graduate uh, engineering uh, degree is to train and to graduate responsible engineers with a strong research-based science and technology background, aware of the global challenges, able to understand uh, complexity, able to work in an international environment, able to find and adapt uh, relevant innovative and sustainable science and technology solutions, able to manage big companies, SMEs, administrations as well, uh, share common values, excellence, uh, social and international openness, innovation, solidarity. What are our education is composed uh, with? Uh, first of all, you know that uh, most of our courses are taught in French. For this, you need uh, you need uh, to to show a B1 or B2 uh, level according to uh, the requirement of uh, each uh, school. So, courses taught in French are uh, in uh, science and technology. So you have these very uh, strong uh, components in mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, computer science, and so on. Then uh, a layer of uh, courses in uh, economics, management, entrepreneurship, communications, foreign languages, and a layer of uh, soft skills, soft skills, uh, professional skills uh, uh, that will ease uh, your, um, your connection with uh, the job market and your capacity to navigate the uh, industrial world. Uh, so the pedagogy is very, uh, very uh, hands-on, uh, teamwork, uh, internships, uh, projects. And once again, this is a guarantee of employability with 100% employed students uh, after graduation, even before graduation. The, uh, the, 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 teaching, uh, the teaching is high quality and, uh, and uh, innovative, I speak about uh, uh, hands on uh, courses, um, course, uh, practical exercises, uh, teamwork, project, either individual or uh, group. Internships, internship is compulsory to, um, uh, to award the degree of engineering. You, you need to validate uh, internships uh, depending uh, on the organization of each school curriculum. Uh, you need to validate internship uh, from two to six months. You have uh, also a uh, research-based uh, learning part in the curriculum and international mobility, uh, access to labs, fab labs, incubators, also to encourage um, entrepreneurship. The teaching faculty uh, bringing together professors and experts from companies. And uh, the ratio between students and faculty is, uh, is, very, uh, is very low. Uh, it is uh, five uh, students for one faculty member. So very personalized supervising, training, and, um, and the teaching. Um, what is a um, very important characteristic of our Paris Tech schools 
is links with companies. Links with companies take the form of internships, so these compulsory periods of internships throughout your curriculum. It uh, takes the forms of uh, meetings with companies. Many companies every day are on campus making presentation of their job, their career path. Alumni, alumni are very active uh, in finding uh, internships, also in finding um, uh, first jobs uh, or information about uh, careers. Um, companies are also uh, very active as uh, sponsors of the class, uh, organize uh, field visits and, uh, and uh, other things. Uh, at, at, um, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is, is also a format uh, for training, which is, uh, which is quite um, uh, spread in our schools. And uh, companies provide, uh, provide projects. Uh, they provide a real case project on which students work and deliver solutions. Each school has a, a junior enterprise. It's a student club uh, with uh, company uh, surveys or other um, as a professional services to deliver to, to companies. So it's a good way to get involved in a new enterprise to uh, develop your employability. And companies also contribute to the leadership of the school as, uh, as, as uh, board members, as board members. So they also contribute to the orientation and uh, the, uh, uh, the leadership of uh, the school itself. Okay. Um, you are going to learn in an excellent research environment, um, which uh, is rooted in a prestigious past, as you can see those very famous names, Henri Becquerel, a uh, Nobel Prize in, uh, in physics, uh, Marie Curie, uh, chemistry, uh, Maurice Allais, uh, Frédéric and uh, Irène Julio Curie, Pierre Gilles de Gênes. Uh, Jean Tirole, so I think that all those names uh, ring bell, and they, they are all um, uh, Paris Tech uh, alumni. So uh, excellent in research is uh, rooted in history, uh, and uh, through these famous um, uh, scientists, and also through their inventions uh, like the molecular cuisine by uh, Hervé Tis and uh, Nicolas Curti. At Agro Paris Tech, the quark, the, the quartz clock uh, by uh, Marius Lavé from Arimetri, um, the progressive lenses for visual correction uh, from Bernard uh, Mitna from Institut d'Optique. So, all, all those inventions that have changed and radically transformed uh, our life uh, uh, take root in uh, inventions from famous uh, scientists uh, from uh, Paris Tech uh, schools. Rankings, it's very important to know where Paris Tech uh, is uh, within uh, those rankings that uh, gives, uh, provide the indication on uh, the prestige uh, of each uh, school. So in France, it's, it's a bit complicated. Sometimes you look for the school itself, or sometimes you look to the university uh, the school belongs uh, to. Uh, but uh, basically what you, you, should, uh, you should know that uh, the the two big universities to which uh, Agro Paris Tech and Institut d'Optique belong, uh, Université Paris Sacré, and uh, the other comprehensive university to which uh, SPCI, uh, Chimie Min, uh, uh, belong, Université PSL, are ranked uh, 13th for uh, Paris Sacré and uh, 38th for uh, PSL worldwide in the Shanghai ranking. And uh, by suggest, I want to go into details, but uh, you see that according to their specialty, each school uh, boasts a very high ranking in, uh, in the, the subject. Okay. And uh, this is the QS ranking, which ranks uh, uh, with more schools of uh, engineering, but also universities. So PSL is number 44, Université Paris-Saclay uh, number 86, Ecole des Ponts, which is not ranked by university, but by itself is uh, 245. And uh, then according to, to each domain and each subject, 
same you can uh, you can check that uh, each school of Paris Tech is very high position in each subject. Uh, same for uh, time to your education, PSL 40 staff are exactly uh, 117, Paris Tech in the range. Uh, 251 and 300 because it's right by itself, like Arimeti, uh, 800,000. Uh, and uh, according to, to which topic, you can also check the very uh, high ranking uh, of the, the universities, the uh, School of Paris Tech, belong. Okay. So you are going to live an extraordinary experience and have plenty of uh, opportunities to, uh, to take in, uh, in Paris, because Paris, better Paris, uh, is very attractive for R&D. Uh, it concentrates 2.2% uh, of uh, the GDP of the, the country. In um, Greater Paris, you have all the international company leaders in the sector. It's a very dynamic uh, region and very attractive for entrepreneurs as well. It concentrates uh, all of the best uh, higher education institutions. It's the fifth destination in the world for international students. It provides uh, lots of uh, scholarships and uh, funding opportunities for international mobility. You have a lot of international academic partners and, uh, and the tuition fees, the tuition fees are, are most of the time uh, lower uh, than uh, in uh, other Western countries. It is also the, the country of mathematicians, uh, very famous uh, scientists, and it is a country in which uh, your research uh, acumen uh, will, uh, will be uh, very happy to expand. So it's also a country of culture, uh, tradition, art, uh, history, quality of life, food, food uh, values like uh, freedom, inclusion, uh, critical thinking. It's also an educational standpoint that we focus on much in our system and also a key contribution to the challenges of the ecological transition and the climate change. French language, because we think that uh, most courses are taught in French. French language is the official language of more than uh, 300 million people, this language spoken in the world. Um, and uh, what the uh, students say, the most um, international, uh, sorry, international students uh, say most uh, that they recommend France as their first study destination. 97% believe that studying in France has been a very en enriching experience. 86% believe that studying in France have highlighted their university curriculum. They say that. So. Can trust them. Uh, okay, and in Paris, we have a consultation of industry companies, uh, more than uh, 8,000. 8, One third of them is a foreign uh, company uh, headquartered in uh, Greater Paris. It is uh, one of the world's uh, best student cities with seven universities, uh, 40 uh, graduate school of engineering. So, a very dynamic and dense um, environment and 40% uh, of national uh, investment in research and development is done uh, in the Greater Paris uh, region. Okay, companies, or so few names, I'm sure that you know the majority of them because they operate uh, worldwide, uh, like uh, Atos, Dassault System, uh, L'Oreal, uh, Microsoft, uh, Orange, uh, Singoba, uh, Safran, so all those uh, companies uh, are French origin, but they have expanded and they operate locally and they provide, as we saw earlier, uh, jobs, uh, cooperation with uh, research, uh, training and uh, topics and many opportunities you will have during your curriculum to work closely with uh, those companies. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they are led by uh, alumni from our schools, like uh, Christelle Hedeman, she's the CEO of uh, Orange, the telecom uh, uh, national operator, uh, Philippe Knosch, uh, from, uh, he's the CEO of uh, Ohano in uh, mining, uh, also the, uh, Thales, uh, Thales Patrice is also um, an, um, an 
alumni and uh, ArcelorMittal. Uh, ArcelorMittal so CEO is also um, an alumni from uh, one of our school, RMIT. Okay, um, or you can choose to launch your own uh, endeavor, create your own startups. We have many uh, new, young, uh, innovative uh, companies or, uh, which have been launched, created uh, by uh, alumni. Uh, the majority of them in the, in the fields of artificial intelligence uh, or um, solutions for sustainable development. Uh, so you will be encouraged and supported if you like to test your idea and uh, launch the startup that you can then run later in another country. Okay, uh, very international experience. So remember that 30% uh, of the students are international on our campus representing uh, 75 different nationalities coming from uh, partnerships and uh, partnerships are very important. We have uh, 70 agreements with international university that contributes to this, uh, uh, to this international uh, dynamic life on our campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing uh, important more and more is our commitment against all discriminations. Uh, our commitment to gender equality. We do many things to promote uh, the engineering careers to women, women in science. And uh, we also work a lot in the inclusion of uh, all profiles, means all culture, nationalities, and also students with uh, special needs in our curricula. And all the schools are very, very committed to give uh, equal opportunities to every every student alumni so this after once you graduate you will join a very uh, big network of uh, 90,000 alumni from those uh, seven paris tech schools uh, located in 13 countries uh, worldwide each country has their own chapter their own organization and uh, they are very helpful helpful to uh, to help finding a job to share to share experience and also to become a network uh, made by people on which you can rely all along your career and life uh, so if we sum up the added value of the diploma engineer uh, through learning learning provides practical exercises between 30 and 50 percent of the course it provides internship full-time period full-time internship uh, in company or in laboratories. Uh, it provides teamwork, project management, research-driven uh, teaching, which contribute to define and solve problems or find uh, solutions, uh, design prototypes, tests, uh, and uh, run uh, science and technology solutions, processes, uh, products, and, uh, and so on. In close contact to businesses, means that uh, the diploma engineer enables you to work in any any domain production r d consulting services it opens lots lot of uh, professional opportunities uh, opportunities worldwide it is very important to check the uh, international career of the students so either directly to industry or uh, with a phd uh, leading either to an academic career or a career at industry, because uh, industry requires also uh, many, uh, many uh, PhD graduate students. Okay, so uh, thank you very thank much for your attention and uh, I'll give the floor to Ricardo. The floor is yours. turning on my, my video. So uh, we are going to go now through the selection process. How, how can you join this wonderful program and how can you join one of our schools? Essentially, uh, the idea is that in France, the engineering school is equivalent to a master's degree. Okay, so that means that in France, you have two different paths. You can get a master's and go to the doctorate or you can get an engineering degree and go to the doctorate. So bear that in mind throughout uh, the whole process. And our uh, admission program 
puts you in that master's level. So most of our admission program will put you in our second year of engineering degree, which is the equivalent of the first years of master's in France. Okay, so you're gonna do two and three, equivalent to a full master's degree. Um, so if you could go to the next one, that's it. You have therefore to get the, to have achieved that level in your studies. Okay, it's, it's a common confusion we get sometimes requests from high school students wanting, wanting to enter our, our schools, they cannot, okay? You have to get that higher level. Our students from France already have college education level when they apply for us. So you will have to have some piece of your or bachelor's degree already in science or engineering or economics or a similar field or mathematics. And uh, you have to be good in that, okay? It's not, uh, Marie-Christine said, only 5% of the French students reach the engineering schools in the whole France, not in one of the Paris Tech schools, okay? Uh, I would like to say that in our schools only 1% reach, we are the top 1%, but that may be just my, my trying to say we are better than the others. Um, you will be taught in French, and, uh, but you are required to speak very good English, okay? Uh, so uh, our students have to have, when they finish their, uh, our international students, when they finish their training here, they have to have, it's, it's, an, it's a requirement from our overseeing institutions and committees that you have a very good mastery of French and English. At the end, okay? So let's try to go through the next one, please, uh, Florence. We, uh, we are divided up in a few countries. So we have a program specific and very well adapted to Latin American countries. So Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia are the countries which we have an agreement already. And this is a long list of the institutions. We have signed agreements, we have double degrees with them. Okay, so that means that you will get essentially the same thing in both in the three countries, Argentina, Brazil, or Colombia. Uh, we're not showing this here. You're gonna be selected after at least five semesters in your course. Okay, that's when we are gonna to talk to you. That's when you do a written test. That's when you, you get an interview. And if you are selected, you're supposed to leave your country a year later. So once you have finished at least seven semesters. Then you come to France and you're gonna spend two years here. So you're gonna do the second year and the third year. That's equivalent to the two master's years as I mentioned before. And then you have to finish your courses in your, in your home country. If you have finished them before, it's fine. You don't have to go back. But if you haven't finished them, uh, you have to get your diploma from your home country so that you get our diploma here. Okay. So selection is September, October, admission is a year later, September of the following year. So if you apply this year, we are gonna talk to you this September and October. And if you are successful, you're gonna go to France, September, 2023. Uh, the next one, please, uh, Florence. So uh, China is a different process. We have two paths with China. Uh, the program for the countries that I showed, it's open to partner institutions, okay? For China, it's open bar, everybody can apply. But we have uh, a few universities, which we have a, 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 a privileged partnerships, and then you can get a double degree with those universities. There's a list here not everybody has an agreement with all these universities. So you should check with the school you are aiming at in the Paritech group and check if they have a double degree with them. And if they don't, you can apply for the general program uh, specific to China. So uh, the general program specific to China means that you get your bachelor's degree in China and then you can come here. This is essentially uh, the process. So you're gonna do the four years in China, that's equivalent to the bachelor's here. You're gonna be selected, you have to learn French, you have to master English, and then you come to France for uh, the, 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 the two years in the, in the French system. And eventually you can get a master's from your home institution if you continue in the training. Okay, uh, or you can, can, can move on from us. We're gonna do short. So uh, these are uh, for Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, and China. 
just one detail because we might have students from Russia here. We do have a program specific to Russia that because of the current situation, uh, the government orders that we cannot have uh, an exchange with the Russian institutions, but we can have an exchange with the Russian citizens. So if you are from Russia and you want to apply, you cannot use our regular program with Russia. You have to use our worldwide uh, program, but you're still welcome and you can apply and, and uh, we will look at your file. So if you are not in one of those PyTech partner universities, or if you are from Russia this year, this specific year, you have to finish your bachelor's degree and then you can apply, okay? Uh, always check if we don't have specific agreements, but that's very specific to each school. So the general case is you finish your bachelor's degree and you can apply. So the, I, I think we have a, a schematics. It's a very simple schematics on that. You finish, you do the equivalent of a master's here. So you have the engineering diploma, which guarantees you that you, not doesn't guarantee, I don't like to say that, you still have to be good, but which entitles you to apply for a PhD program in the following app. So the selection process is exactly the same for everybody, okay? There's no distinction between the countries or uh, countries which do not have an agreement. There is a distinction which level you should be, but the calendar and the process is the same. So the calendar is the next step. We can move to it. When we have a partner institution, this partner institution has to present you. You cannot just come and say, hey, I wanna to go to Paris. No, you have to talk to your home institution. You have to apply in there uh, parallel to us. You have to apply with them. They are gonna select you and they are gonna tell us, we have talked to these students. These are fine to go. Okay, just back a little bit. Then you also have in all the cases to apply with us. Okay, so there's this website that's gonna open June 1st and will be open until September 21st. Don't leave your application to the last minute. Okay, don't wait until September 20th to say, hey, ha, I should maybe follow that website they told me. Do it as fast as you can. You do not need to do everything in a single shot. Put the documents you have, come back later, complete it. You're, you're not required to have everything ready from the first day. At the end of the September, uh, at the end of September, we are going to look at all the applications. We are going to validate the applications that require validation from a partner institution. And we are going to see for the other applications if they meet the, 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 the minimum levels uh, of time of diplomas that we need. You're going to go a uh, written test. It's, uh, it's a web-based test. There is a trial day. So the test is September 30th. And on September 28th, you have a trial test, just a, 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 a blank test, just a mock test to see, so that you see how it works. It it's, doesn't count, okay? So the real one is September 30th. After the test, we are gonna look at all the files. We're gonna look at our test results. It's not a contest. It's not a, 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 an exam. It's, it's a level test. So it doesn't mean that the best students will be guaranteed to enter, the best students that succeed in the test. It's a holistic thing. We are gonna look at your file, we are gonna look at your test, and then see which students uh, can continue. So for those, we are gonna call you for, a, for, a, for an interview. In some countries, we are gonna be present in the country and the interview will be in place. In other countries, we are gonna do this uh, on Zoom or a similar tool. And uh, by November 25th, you have a final answer, okay? There are steps between the interview and that final answer, but if we get to that, we're gonna go into detail on this. But the main point is register before September 21st, you have an interview, you have a written test, you have an interview, and then you are accepted or not, okay? So if we move to the next slide, this is the more specific calendar. So the calendar is the same for all countries until the written test, until the online written test. Then the interview will happen between October, I think the first one is October 10th for China. And the last one is at the end of October. So it's October 28th for Colombia and uh, the rest of the world. Okay, so you can look here which one interests you. This is already defined. 
it's a generally a week. We block a week per country or per program, and um, we do the interviews. We might, after that interview, some schools, not all of them, that's each school is independent. They choose what they want to do. They might want to talk to you again, in particular to see your scientific level in a few topics or to see if you understand well the spirit of that school. And then we have a meeting on November 25th to, to decide uh, who can go to which school and we tell you right away what, what happened, okay? So uh, this is the essential process. Uh, what's next? This is a copy of the web page. So be attentive to this. This is a common mistake. Okay, uh, if you are uh, uh, from Asia, Asia, don't click in Argentina. If you are from Brazil, don't click in China. Okay, choose the right program that applies to you. And uh, in doubt, you can get in touch with us. As a general rule, as a rule of thumb, your country is the country where you are studying, okay? So if you are from Colombia, but you're studying in Brazil, you should apply through the Brazilian university, okay? If you are uh, uh, from Korea and you're studying in China, you should apply from China. There are exceptions, there are a few details. In case of doubt, get in touch with us and we'll look at your case, okay? Uh, the next one, uh, how much does it cost? So uh, it, it's, it's very important for you to know that the cost, you cost us, each student, not you specifically, any student in our schools costs us about 20,000 euros per year. It's 17 to 18, the real number, but it varies. Let's round this up to 20K, okay? That's not what the students pay. So, uh, the, the, the French government or the French uh, uh, overseeing uh, organisms will cover most of that. I don't like to call it tuition cost because tuition means that the university can make a profit. That's the real cost, the 18K, okay? So that, that's how much we have to pay teachers. That's how much we have to pay electricity. We have to pay lab material. We have to pay equipment. That comes to 20K, to 20K. So the French government covers most of it, covers between 95 to 80% of it. So each school has a different tuition fee, which will, rank, which will range from zero in a few cases to 4,000 euros uh, per year per student. Okay. When you are in a double degree, quite often you have at least a partial waiver. And if you have some of scholarships like Eiffel or the, the French consulate or some others, you have also full waiver. I think the next slide is, is, is a more detailed uh, data on this. Of course, we cannot read this right now. This is available in, in the PyTech website. So just go there. And that gives you an idea, a very good idea of how much will it cost uh, to apply and to study with us, okay? So you see that you have zero in a few cases and you have 4,000 as a maximum, uh, or 5,500 5, as a maximum in a few cases. So the next one is the most important thing for you, not for us, okay? But you don't care if, you don't care if you're gonna like here. What you generally ask is, where am I gonna live? Okay, so that we help you and we take care for most of it. You shouldn't worry about that right now. Once you are admitted, you're gonna work with the schools which will assist you throughout the whole process, okay? They will give you the documents for visa application. They will evaluate your French level. They will help you with your French training if, if it's necessary. They will put you in touch with students that are currently in our schools and uh, we also have housing uh, in our facilities, not necessarily in the place of the school, but we have access to affordable housing, uh, which can also have some help. So we're gonna help you with that. But this is a school-based process. It's not a Paritech thing. Each school has its own uh, contacts and its own system. So once you are admitted, you have to work on that, not before, okay? Uh, the next one. Uh, there was already a question in the, in, 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 in the window, in the question window. Uh, is there any scholarships? There are many. 
there is one common point for most, if not all of these scholarships. They are merit-based, they are not social scholarships. Okay, so the first thing you have to be is to be good. Uh, I think the most prestigious one and the, the best one in terms of financial support is the IFO scholarship. It gives you, I think, 1,200 uh, euros per month. It pays your, your airfare, it finds you housing, it has it all. It's extremely selective, okay? Generally to, to uh, receive an IFO scholarship, you have to be in the top 5% of your class if your class is really big or you have to be number one or two if it's a smaller class. And really big, I, I'm talking about a few hundred people, okay? So if in your class you have a few hundred people you're in the top 5%, you have a shot at the IFO. If it's say 30, 40, you have to be number one or two. So it's very important that we have your ranking. Then each country, each French embassy in each country has a program to, to foster uh, exchange with France. And this we have no access ourselves. So you have to check with the embassy in your country if they have a program specific for you that they can give you support to come here. You have also country specific programs like the FITEC and it, it's on the back. You have uh, school foundations that will give you scholarships and you have also industrial scholarships. The next one, please, Florence. Uh, when you, you're gonna study with us, you should go to the webpage, study with us, okay? And it will give you a, a, a plethora of information on uh, things you might ask. So you can ask us, it's probably faster if you just read this. And it also shows us your reading skills and your comprehension skills. It's already a good point if you have this information. These are points that, for, for instance, we're gonna talk during the interview, okay? If, if you know what to expect here. So the next one, uh, this is pretty obvious. Go to our websites, send our, uh, our international services emails. So this, write down the website, it's pytech.fr and study with us, pytech.fr. Take a screenshot, take a picture. Let's wait five seconds, four, three, two, one. I hope you took a picture, okay? and you have this information, uh, this is your entry point. Don't forget it, okay? I think the next one, we have a bunch of emails. No, not yet. Uh, so uh, the procedure, well, this is again our website. We just go through this very quickly. You know how to use a website, right? So uh, you can go to this, the next slide. So we have more time for questions. Another uh, photo opportunity. Another five seconds, grab your phones, take a picture of this. Okay, you have all the, the our social medias, you have all our uh, uh, information that you can get here. So this is very useful for you to have. I hope this is also in our website and by hope, I mean, I know it is. So you can always go back there. Uh, and I think we have a slide with emails, that's it. Okay, so each country has a specific email if you have any questions, hey, I'm a student so-and-so, can I apply? Write to the proper email and we are gonna answer you as soon as we can, okay? And you can also get in touch uh, with our contacts. So Marie de Bonich is here, you can see her uh, amongst the panelists. She is our representative in Asia. She is located in Shanghai at this time and uh, she can help you with your application. Each school also has an international uh, email address, you can write to the school and ask questions about the specific program. And I think this is the essential portion of the, uh, the program. So I hope uh, you're convinced that it's a very good choice to come study with us. And uh, we should open we should open for questions now, Florence, is that the... Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Mary Christine and Ricardo for, for presentation. So we already answered some questions in the Q&A section, but we have three uh, answers, uh, three questions, actually. Um, how, I want to know if there is any major related to microelectronics who can answer okay. it. This, this is a very, it is a very important point. Uh, the engineering schools in France are not like engineering schools in other countries. 
you don't have majors. You have, for instance, you have the diploma of ESPCI, you have the diploma of Ecole de Pont, you have the diploma of Agro. You're not majoring in one specific topic like mechanical engineering or chemical engineering or, or electrical engineering. So uh, you will have a generic training in engineering with specific topics in each school. Of course, if you go to Chimie Paris Tech, you should expect to have a good training in chemistry, right? Don't, don't expect to go there and have mechanical engineering. I think that microelectronics, uh, maybe uh, Daniela can answer. I would say that Axe would be the most uh, close to it, but it's not maybe the most, the biggest topic of it, right? Uh, it depends because uh, I'm not very sure. It, it depends uh, exactly what uh, you are interested in microelectronics because we are mainly specialized in industrial, industrial mechanical engineering. Uh, we have electric, uh, electrical engineering in the last year, but uh, maybe you could send us a message, uh, an email with more information about you, about your background, and uh, this way we'd, uh, we will be able to to give you a more accurate uh, answer. Yeah, you, I think it is the also, best way. Yeah, you might also find some some things in microelectronics and Ecole de Mina, I think. But it's yeah. again, it's it's a generic thing, so you should get mm. in touch with them and explain better what you you're intending to do. But you may pay attention to the fact that e even if you study microelectronics, it will not be the only things you study because the diploma d'ingénieur is very general. So it means you don't have a master degree in microelectronics, because, uh, but a diploma d'ingénieur with microelectronics, economics, management, uh, and so on. And foreign languages, communication, a lot of things actually, not only a specific uh, specialization in microelectronics. Yeah, your diploma will not mention microelectronics at all. Yeah. They, you get a paper, it's not written microelectronics and not anything similar to that. It's written engineer from yeah. this school. Yeah. Uh, then a uh, question from Cambodia. Uh, I'm studying in four years uh, at university. In the fourth years, I don't graduate. Can I apply for this scholarship? Who may answer? Uh, I don't understand. I, I, may, I may give a shot. I don't understand exactly the question. So uh, if you're studying and you have not graduated yet, but you will grad be graduated when you would come to France. Yes, you can apply to the program. Okay, that, that's fine. You don't need to have graduated before, uh, uh, before, uh, before the selection. You have to be graduated before arriving in France. Uh, scholarship is unrelated. It's uh, the scholarship. If you are admitted in the program, then we look at the scholarships. We don't look at the scholarship before you are admitted in the program. Okay, thank you. Then uh, a question for Marie-Christine uh, from a student from Bangladesh studying uh, already get uh, a bachelor in Malaysia in uh, civil engineering. And uh, if you, uh, there is a, a question about the selection process. If you don't have any official ranking certificate from your school, from your university, you have to mention it in the, in the process, in the, in the application form, but it's okay. You, you just have to, to, to say it. And then, uh, Marie-Christine, there is a question about the international student quota of Ecole des Ponts each semester. The um, international student quota? Yeah. Uh... There is not. Okay. What are you in the proportion of international students yeah. compared to the cohorts? Yeah. Uh, it's it's average of thirty percent. There's no quota. <laughs> uh, there's no quota. The selection and the, the admission are based uh, on uh, the uh, on uh, the academic um, performance, but there's no uh, there's no quota. Yeah. Um, then a question about the career of the students after the program. They have a big career. They can get be a scientist. They can be a manager. They can what? What can you say? They they can work in in factories or in consulting or can yes, you give I some? Mean, that's, yes, that they can work in uh, any sector of uh, industry. 
and uh, the entry jobs are uh, engineers, uh, project uh, officers. Uh, at the very beginning, I mean, entry job, of course, you don't have a leadership position, not a management position. Uh, but um, the thing is that the value of the degree of engineering is an accelerator of career paths. So let's say that you can start as a, uh, as a, a engineer uh, project um, uh, project leader, and gradually you you will very quickly um, access higher positions. So it is um, a career accelerator. Yeah. In, at industry and uh, of course if, if you continue on a phd the, the, the thing is that uh, after the phd you can take either an academic career at uh, universities uh, or at industries because many industries require a phd in certain domain yeah um and then a question about the holistic approach uh, in the selection process which factors do you evaluate from a student's profile besides grades so ricardo maybe yeah your height no <laughs> um, uh, the, the point is let's say that you have a wonderful performance in the written test doesn't mean you're in we're going to look at your records and see that you are a really average student we're going to ask well how did he get the, the, the written test so well? Okay, that will put us in, in, in warning mode. It's not that you are eliminated, but we'll, we're going to ask many questions. So the, the thing is, we have to get as many elements from you to see if you are. Number one, a, a, a student that has the same level of the students we have currently in France. So you have to have a good academic performance and you have to be able to manage the written test to some extent, okay? Second point, you have to have the maturity to leave your country and come to France, okay? We don't want the student that comes here and says, all that I want to do is come back home. No, that, that's a very important thing, that the interview generally gives us a very good idea if you are mature enough to, to leave your country. Then you have to understand what the schools will bring to you, okay? It's, it's not just, well, I'm going to go to France and see the Eiffel Tower and, and eat foie gras and take a, 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 a batomouche in the Seine. No, it's, uh, if you come to, to, to study in one of the French schools, it's important for us that this is not just, I don't know what to do. It has some career uh, 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 increment to, 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 your, to your CV. It has some some positive aspects to your CV. It's not just, I don't know what to do, I'll just go there. So it has to be, uh, I'm not saying that you have, oh, I'm studying, I don't know, chemical engineering in Brazil, so I will go to, to Ecole de Chimie. No, it's a good choice, of course, but it's not this that we're looking for. You might say, hey, I'm studying chemical engineering in Brazil, and I want to get a lot of uh, extra uh, training in mechanical engineering, so I'll apply to Axamiti. And show that despite the fact that I have done a lot of chemistry, I have enough background to go to study with them. And this will be something, some aggregation in my, in my career that I wouldn't have if I just stayed home or if I just go to. So we are going to look at all these aspects. It's not just a number that you get in the written test that will put you in or take you out. You have to be a good student. You have to perform well, reasonably well in the test. You have to give a, have a clear idea on why you want to leave. Uh, your country and spend some time in France. You have to show us that you're able to do that. Okay, that uh, you cannot, you can do that without your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousins, and everybody else. That you're able to live by yourself. So that's why there are so many steps in the process, and we try to evaluate you throughout throughout all these steps. And generally, we do a correct job in that. Okay, we have not many fails. Yeah. And the last question about security and safety in Paris because of yellow vests. Um, maybe we can say that this movement uh, is now finished. We may have some others uh, in the next month, but it's, it's part of a democracy in France. And maybe you will uh, already uh, also participate in some demonstration for climate, for instance. But actually, it's very secure and safe in Paris. And you ha will have 
any assistance you need from the school or from, from the public services in France, uh, you can come to Paris uh, and take it easy. It's not a, an issue. And maybe some words about COVID pandemic. Um, the pandemic is now uh, quite uh, not quite finished in France, but it's uh, the situation is very good, and uh, we are all vaccinated. If you come to France and if you didn't have a, didn't get uh, any vaccine, you will be vaccinated for free. Uh, you will have health insurance for students, so uh, the situation is uh, under control. There is no issues now for students. Or maybe my colleagues want to add some words about this security or pandemic. No? Okay. And then the last question, uh, maybe, or Rick, uh, Artemio, maybe you can answer in the QA session about Brazil. Um, and um, there was also um, a question about uh, why not September 2022. The fact is that we know that most of the applicants don't speak French, so they have six months to, to learn French before coming to France. That's why we do it a year before. And it's also in the autumn so that you can apply for some scholarships. That's why we, we take our time and you don't come to, uh, in September 2022, but in September 2023. Yeah. So um, we don't offer any bachelor uh, a degree in, in our schools. We, the Diplôme d'Ingénieur is very specific and it uh, begins with a master degree actually for international students. We don't offer it. It's very specific in France, but uh, that's it. So I would suggest we can go to the second part uh, of this webinar to the presentation of each school. So my colleague, uh, each of them will have 10 minutes time to, to present uh, the schools and uh, you can uh, ask your question in the Q&A se uh, session or in the toolbar. So we will begin first. So you, you see here a wide range of, um, of disciplines uh, offered by the schools, and uh, we will begin with AgroParisTech. So, Jeanne, you have the floor. Yes, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, a few words about AgroParisTech. Um, what is AgroParisTech? So, it's a French public institute with a rich history because it spans over 180 years. And it has a forward-looking approach, which is aimed at addressing the main challenges of the 21st century, which are feeding the population in a sustainable way, protecting natural resources, fostering innovation, and developing the bioeconomy. Uh, for this, we have um, international. It, it, the school is really internationally renowned for the quality of its program and for its research activities. Uh, its training is really uh, research-based. Um, so the training is uh, research-based and it really focuses on innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, and there are two key missions that are really to offer high quality training to the students and to the professional in the different curricula that offer AgroParisTech, and also to advance the scientific knowledge, uh, always in close association with public and private research centers, and also with the uh, companies uh, in, in order to really advance the research. And AgroParisTech is very well ranked in different international uh, rankings, such as the QS Top University Ranking, where we are uh, first in France in the field of agriculture and forestry, third in Europe and fourth worldwide. Also, we are in the Shanghai Ranking, not as AgroParisTech, but as Université Paris-Saclay, from which we are members, and we contribute to the success of the ranking of Université Paris-Saclay in the field of agriculture, in biotechnology and also in food. 
and also Agropartech is one of the is the best school in the field of agriculture in France. So if you come here, really you have one of the best uh, school in the field of agriculture and forestry. Um, so there are four main fields of scientific expertise, which are agricultural production and forestry, food and non-food transformation, sustainable management of natural resources and the environment, and human health. And for to address these fields, uh, GoParitech, in fact, is organized in five departments of education and research. Uh, so I will uh, tell the name. So it's agronomy, forestry, water, and environmental sciences and technology, life sciences and health, Oh, sorry, <laughs> um, sciences and engineering for food and bioproducts, social sciences, economics and management, and finally, modeling, mathematics, informatics and physics. Um, so once you are admitted in AgroParisTech, how it is organized, what happens? So what is really interesting with the uh, AgroParisTech uh, engineering curriculum is that you have a lot of options and it's really, um, you can really have a tailor-made curriculum. So first, during the second year of studies, you have a wide range of choices as you have to choose between four different study tracks depending on what you really want to, to study. Uh, so either in sustainable production, sectors and territories, engineering of food products, biomolecules and, engineer and energy, sorry, environmental engineering and management, engineering and health, human bioproducts and the environment. So uh, when you arrived, you are divided into these different study tracks, but you also have a core curriculum, which is the same for every student, in, in which you, you will study engineering sciences and mathematics modeling, economic and social sciences and management. What is also interesting, you have seven modules with a choice of more than 100 course units. So, so really you can either decide to discover a brand new topic or really to specialize in what you are really interested in. So it depends on what you want to do. And you can also do apprenticeship tracks, uh, which means that you can study and at the same time work in a company. So it might be also interesting if you want to be uh, right now in the world of, the, of, of work. It's all, and it's, uh, it's not possible since long, so it can be a good option for you also. You also have many, no, I wasn't finished, sorry. <laughs> you also have many opportunities during the third year, uh, as you have to choose between 20 specialties in 10 different fields, for instance, biotech, agricultural development, nutrition. So once again, a lot of options. But you can also decide to join one of the 44 master programs offered by AgroParisTech and Université Paris-Saclay and its partners. And if it's not enough for you, you can also join a master program from another institution. So really, you have no, no many, not many limits. You can really specialize in what you really prefer. Uh, and all along your studies in AgroParisTech, you are involved in team projects, in sports courses, in languages. There is also international mobility, as we have 200 partnerships with 155 universities over uh, 47 different countries. So if you want to spend a semester or an internship abroad, it is possible. And of course, during the second and the third year, you have compulsory internships. It's a uh, two months, I think, in the second year and six months in the third year. And some students join really famous companies such as L'Oréal, Danone, or Nestlé, but you can also go in labs or other kind of companies. So once again, a lot of options. Uh, what happens once you graduate? So 80% of our students get a job less than two months after graduation and 8% pursue a PhD. The entry level salary is 38K per year, euro per year. And the main field is either agriculture and forest or services, industry, and also public sector and research. And uh, finally, the next slide. So a bit different about the student life, but it's also really important. As you can see on this map, AgroParisTech is composed of seven campuses, which is which are located in uh, 
vibrant and attractive cities in France. Um, so you can see in the middle of the map, it's our main campus. It's in Palaiso uh, in the Paris region. It's a brand new campus. It just opened right now. So everything is brand new, the classrooms, the labs. So it will be very nice. And uh, here uh, you have food and bio-based product, environment, sustainable agricultural production and health. And uh, as an um, engineering student, you can also go either to Nancy, uh, where you can study forest, wood and natural habitat, or also in uh, Montpellier. It's more about special information, water management and ecosystem management. The other campuses, it's more for masters, PhDs. So you may go there, but maybe not right away. Um, we have 2,300 students and 16% are degree seeking international students. And also as uh, every engineering school, we have a lot of students organization and events. Uh, you will be able to meet other students and uh, to have a real social life here with sports, uh, culture, uh, body programs, student unions. So really there is a lot of things to do apart from studying, even if it's re also really important. And uh, don't worry also about accommodation. I know it's really hard to find accommodation, especially in the Paris region. But as international students, you are, you are given the priority for our accommodation uh, at affordable prices. So we have different places in uh, the Paris region. And uh, depending on where you study, what you do, you can go to one of them. And uh, really, you don't have to worry that much about looking for an accommodation, which I think it's really good. And you also have administrative support from the International and European Relations Office, uh, which will also help you to find some scholarship and sometimes to do the file to the scholarship. So don't hesitate to contact us directly. If you have question or anything, uh, we are available for you. Thank you, Jeanne. So now Arimetier with Daniela, please. Thank you, Florence. Uh, hello, everybody. So I'm Daniela Stanlazic and I have the pleasure uh, to uh, make today's, uh, today's presentation on behalf of Arts et Métiers. <clears throat> uh, our institution, since its uh, creation, has put uh, its skill at the service of, uh, of industry. And uh, our mission statement is to deliver solutions to, to the need of every sector of, uh, of industry. To this end, uh, we offer courses from uh, undergraduate to doctorate level, among uh, which uh, there is also our leading program, Arts et Métiers Parité Grande École uh, Engineering Program, which is the, the, the first one uh, in the list here. Uh, and it is uh, the, the equivalent of a, of a master's level. Arts et Métiers uh, conducts uh, research applied to five major uh, factory of the future sectors, uh, which are transport, engineering, energy, sorry, health technology, construction and uh, manufacturing. And uh, we have uh, been awarded the excellence label for transferring uh, research to the industrial world, which is the Carnot Institute uh, label. Some figures, we have 15 laboratories uh, conducting research in uh, manufacturing systems, innovation and production systems, uh, robotics or co-robotics, augmented reality, biomechanics, additive, additive manufacturing. Uh, we have six research uh, chairs in health, environment, clean mobility and smart industrial systems. We have real scale technology uh, platforms. Um, we have in total uh, 6,000 students uh, from undergraduate to doctorate uh, levels, among which we have uh, 1,000 uh, international students. And uh, we have uh, around 170 partners, uh, university uh, worldwide. Next, uh, next slide, please. Arts et Métiers is uh, a unique institution uh, with 11 locations which are spread all over uh, France. Um, you, can see, uh, you can see the campuses, our campuses and institutes uh, here uh, on the map. We have a campus in Paris, in Lille, uh, Metz uh, and Chalon in the east of France. Uh, we have uh, Cluny in the Middle East. So we have Aix-en-Provence. 
um, near the Mediterranean Sea. We have uh, Bordeaux in the west, uh, Angers, um, in, um, also in, in the west. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this allows us to, to build uh, even closer ties uh, with, uh, with industry in order to offer our students uh, workplace integration, uh, training programs, and to the companies, uh, the possibility of innovation uh, uh, transfer and uh, research. Also, uh, Arzometier also uh, not, <laughs> not finished. Arzometier, uh, also uh, supports uh, entrepreneurs uh, through our uh, talent pipeline and the incubators for uh, for industry and high tech industry, and we offer training programs for for students uh, who uh, who wants to create uh, their own uh, their own business. Now with the. Move, uh, move on. Thank you. Uh, so this is our um, leading program, uh, which is uh, the Arts de Métier School, Arts de Métier Paris Tech Grande École Engineering Program. Uh, the main features of the program are that uh, it offers strong background in mechanical and industrial engineering, that uh, it has a pedagogical approach combining theory and, uh, and practice. Uh, we have um, multiple and varied choices of specialized uh, final year courses. And uh, as it, uh, it has, was, was told uh, earlier in the presentation, we also have a six month uh, mandatory uh, immersion in, uh, in companies, so a training ship program. The, the structure of the program uh, is uh, it's composed of two years. So the, the first year uh, for, uh, for the admitted students um, uh, would be um, a first semester, uh, which is taught um, on all our campuses. Uh, and this, uh, this semester would be uh, either a mechanical or industrial engineering, uh, mechanical industrial engineering oriented semester. Uh, during which um, students could attend courses in uh, solid mechanics, in uh, management, uh, industrial organization, uh, materials, product design, and manufacturing. Um, the second semester of this uh, fir first, uh, first year of study here uh, is a semester oriented in energy and industrial engineering with courses in uh, electronics, uh, in automatics, uh, energetics, system design, uh, system manufacturing, uh, industrial organization. And uh, during both semesters, there are uh, projects that are carried out by, uh, by students, uh, one more research oriented and uh, the other one, which is a more, um, a more applied project. Um, the next year, so the, the last year of studies, uh, the third year, uh, third year of the, our engineering degree, um, student can choose a, a course, a specialized course among uh, more than 30 courses we offer. And this course could be in, in various fields. Uh, some examples here, so uh, energies for sustainable development, uh, aeronautics, uh, fluid mechanics, mechatronics, um, business creation, uh, electrical engineering, virtual, virtual and uh, augmented uh, reality and so on. Uh, during this uh, semester, uh, there is a core. Um, there are core courses uh, in um, management of logistic chain and uh, strategical man management, and um, a project in the laboratory, um, which is carried out in a laboratory. And the second semester of, of this last year is uh, entirely dedicated to the six months internship in company, and uh, this is uh, this internship is mandatory. Uh, in order to, to be awarded the, the engineering degree. And uh, last but not least, uh, throughout uh, each year, so the, the second and the third year, um, students can uh, follow courses uh, in foreign languages, um, among which the French as a foreign language courses, which is, uh, is mandatory for all our international students. And we have uh, also a course uh, which is called Professional uh, Project uh, Initiative, during which uh, students are um, uh, are helped by uh, by uh, professionals from from companies uh, uh, to 
to get to know themselves better, to know what uh, their career they would like uh, to have, uh, in which uh, in which industry, how to how to present their um, their applications, how to to write a CV, a statement letter, and so on. Um, some figures about uh, about <laughs> can you stay on that? Previous, thank you. Uh, some figures about uh, uh, some statistics about uh, about our graduate students. So, eighty-three, uh, more than eighty-three percent work uh, less than three, six months after the graduation, and other uh, nine to ten uh, percent pursue uh, their studies uh, with the PhD, for example. Um, we have also 63 of, of students who are employed uh, before before the graduation, so they find their uh, their employment um, during their uh, their final uh, final uh, year internship. The top sectors of employment of our students are uh, are uh, engineering services and consulting, uh, transportation, aeronautics, automotive, rail. Uh, construction uh, and the top working functions are production and quality control, uh, research development, innovation, and consultancy. And the average salary and salary for our students it's around 42 uh, key uh, euro per year. In the next slide, thank you. Some uh, some information about uh, about the campus life. Um, we have eleven sites in France. Um, among these eleven sites, uh, we have eight campuses, which are dedicated to um, to the to teaching to to, to um, teaching programs. So this um, the other three sites are more research oriented sites. So. Uh, um, <clears throat> students uh, who came uh, who come to France for the engineering program uh, would have to um, uh, to to, uh, to follow the uh, the courses in our one of our campuses, and uh, on each campus we have international relation offices uh, offering administrative support and uh, tutoring. Each campus uh, has uh, its uh, hall, own uh, hall of residence uh, where uh, where students can uh, can stay during the the year. They have documentation centers and IT rooms, of course, with uh, internet access. Uh, we have uh, infrastructures uh, which allow students to take part in uh, various teams and uh, individual sports. We have a national students association, um, which uh, offers activities in uh, sport uh, or other cultural, scientific, uh, humanitarian business activities. Um, one of our um, one of our main um, main uh, strong uh, strong point is that we have the biggest one of the biggest alumni in, uh, in Europe with. Uh, uh, 34,000 34, alumni, um, and uh, all uh, throughout the year, we offer student and uh, alumni uh, alumni mentoring. So to to sum up, uh, why uh, why are the métier? Um, again, is one of the best and renowned engineering institution in France. Uh, we could uh, get in touch with the industry, acquire business contact, uh, thanks to our. Uh, our sites throughout uh, throughout France and uh, the close uh, the close strings we have uh, links we have with the economic uh, local economic players. Um, you could work on our real scale uh, technology platform, and uh, if interested, uh, you could uh, pursue with a PhD um, at Arts et Métiers after the the two year uh, engineering program. Uh, you could also become a part of our uh, one, the biggest engineering uh, alumni association uh, and in Europe, uh, and of course experience France language, France culture, uh, and take advantage of uh, of our sites. Well, that's all for me. Uh, I uh, leave the floor now to my colleagues from Chimi. Yes, thank you, Daniela and Feti. Uh, thank you, Florence. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, and welcome to this short presentation of Chimie uh, Paris Tech PSL. We are one of the oldest schools of this consortium, uh, Paris Tech, and our school, Chimie Paris Tech, is totally devoted to chemistry, teaching and training in all fields of chemistry. Uh, we were created by Charles Friedel, who is very well known as the, the uh, professor who invented the uh, reaction Friedel and Kraft, which is now widely used in the uh, 
chemical industries in the world. And later on, we had uh, Henri Moisson with our uh, Nobel Prize and the former director of the school. And these two guys show us how the link between uh, research uh, oriented training and companies is extremely important in order to train the uh, engineers in, in chemistry. Uh, as an example, I'm citing the name of Jean Schuller, who is one of our alumni who created the worldwide known company named L'Oreal. And this is again an example of how uh, training and research in our labs can be uh, translated to uh, large uh, or small uh, economic activities. The students are highly selected and you know now that in all the schools of Paritech and all these graduate engineering schools, the selection is one of the pillar of our uh, system. And 50% of them are women, which is something which is extremely important for us and for all the institutions within Paritech. We have a large number of students, but it's small enough to, to, to have a very uh, tight uh, discussion and uh, uh, training and uh, formation of the students. 350 students in, in the engineering program for 140 researchers, professors, and associate professors working with, uh, within Chemie Paritech. This means that we have a very tight and very uh, beneficial ratio of professors and students, which makes everything going very smoothly. In addition to the training in fundamentals of chemistry and all fields of chemistry, our students go through 20% of the program uh, dealing with business management and human skills. This is extremely important in order to, uh, to form the, the leaders uh, having these uh, required skills in uh, management. Uh, they have to know how to manage projects, how to manage companies, how to manage uh, relations between different teams, etc. And 40% of the, of the classes are based also on practical training. And this is also extremely important in order to know how in chemistry we have to deal with the processes, with the uh, uh, mechanism, with the reactions, etc. And this will allow people uh, knowing better how they have to rule and how they have to, to manage the, uh, the project that they have to do. Also 20% of our students are international, and this is extremely uh, important for us to have you with, within our uh, students in order to increase uh, the uh, internationalization of the formation. And most of them, all of them, they have to go abroad for one semester. And this is again, something that is extremely well needed now for the the future leaders in order to, to make them very uh, close to the reality of the internationalizations. On the next slide, I'm showing briefly uh, what we are, the different subjects that we are uh, uh, developing at Chimie Parité uh, in order to let you know that we are not dealing only with chemical processes or chemical engineering program. We are dealing with all kinds of chemistry, ranging from analytical to solid state, to theoretical, molecular, bioorganic chemistry, and so on. This means that we have to consider all the aspects of chemistry in order to develop technologies. And when coming from the fundamentals of this chemistry, to the development of technologies, the students and our uh, uh, future leaders have to, to know exactly how to drive this approach uh, by sustainability, eco-conceptions and recycling and etc. This means that what we are teaching has to be realistic and has to fit with the uh, needs of the uh, economy and also of the environment and the ecology and etc. 
So chemistry, from chemistry to technologies and for to technologies that are applied for different uh, fields, uh, mainly energies, materials, microfluidics, and medicine. On the next slide, I'm showing the, uh, the, the way that the students will be uh, entering the program. So on the, on the previous one, uh, if you can go back one step back, please. Uh, we will see that the students, they will have to spend two years with us. The students coming from the international process, they have to spend two years with us. During the year two and the year three, they will have to go through uh, core courses to strengthen the fundamentals in chemistry and also to go through programs that are research oriented. They will have to work within projects dealing with innovation, management and the economy, and they will have also through two mandatory internship of five months and six months each. This means that during the two years when the students will join us for this uh, master degree, which is the engineering degree, they will have the possibility to go through almost one year internship, meaning working in a company or in a lab laboratory. They will be paid for this. And in addition to this, they might also have the possibility to, to, to get the apprenticeship which is an agreement with the company for two semesters in order to work in a company and also to have their classes at Chimie Parité. This means that this organization of the studies will allow them to strengthen the fundamentals, to practice them, and to have programs that are research oriented. So instead of giving examples of lectures, of tracks that the students are following during these two years. I will show you on the next step, on the next slide, different uh, examples of research that we are doing at Chimie Paris Tech. The, uh, the programs are research oriented. And indeed, what we are developing in our laboratories will be teaching by, by our 100 professors and associate professors and researchers. As an, as an example, I am showing here the one dealing with imaging and characterization, and I am showing two, two really main different uh, applications of imaging and characterization. One related to health sciences, for example, how to use nanomaterials and nanoparticles for optical imaging of tumors, for example, within the body. And you have here a picture of mice <laughs> bearing uh, tumors. And the use of these nanoparticles allow the tuning, the uh, characterization of these tumors and the effect of the uh, medical uh, therapy. And also we, we can use almost the same kind of imaging or different kinds of imaging techniques in order to, to have information on ancient materials and uh, in order to characterize, for example, uh, arts and objects coming from ancient ages. This is how we can really manage and use the imaging techniques using chemistry in order to de develop uh, different kinds of applications. We can also use nano and smart materials for optoelectronics, energy, and medicine. And we need to know how to deal with the chemistry of these nano and smart materials in order to tune them, their properties and have the appropriate uh, characteristics and uh, applications. We have the example of catalysis and sustainable processes. And we have a lab here working on how to produce polymers that can be uh, recycled and their eco-conception has to be taken into account before starting any projects in order to make the processes sustainable. I can also say the example of modeling and simulations of all kinds of processes uh, and uh, mechanisms. We can also 
beside the example of chemical engineering, flow chemistry, and microfluidics that help us a lot in order to, uh, to conceive uh, tools for diagnosis or for flow chemistry, for example. All these examples are uh, some of uh, uh, examples of what we are doing at Chimney Palite, and these are really feeding our programs in teaching the uh, during the two years uh, our students when they come to join us for the engineering degree so the these examples are uh, really show how we are dealing with research innovation and training of the students on the next slide i will show you now an example of how our students, when they finish their formation after graduation, how and where they can get their jobs. So 90% of them, uh, of the engineering students, get a job or PhD before the graduation ceremony. This means that they are highly qualified in order to get something that is really very demanded, having the skills to enter companies such as Exxon, Total, or uh, Renault uh, for transport and energy, or companies like L'Oreal, Chanel for cosmetics, or Danone for, agro, uh, for, uh, for food industries, etc. So this means that they, they will have this very general uh, uh, skills in chemistry that allow them to be very efficient in all kinds of situation according to the specialization that they had during the last semester with, with us. And almost 40% of them get uh, uh, go through the HD program and this shows again that the diplomed engineer, the engineering degree from our schools in Paris Tech is a degree that allow them to go directly to PhD programs if they want to do it. And this means that they have the required skills and fundamentals and levels and uh, excellence as the ones uh, in the academic field. And they can go uh, without any difficulties uh, through these uh, programs. Finally, on the last uh, slide, I will summarize uh, the fact that studying at Chimie Paris Tech uh, for you uh, will be a very nice opportunity to be within students in the top world class university. Our uh, Chimie Paris Tech school belongs to the university PSL, which is as you, you show, uh, as you saw during the first uh, part of the presentation, one of the leaders university in France. So this means that in addition to our degree in engineering, if you are joining us for this, you will be with other students that are preparing their master degree in science or PhD degree in science in different fields of chemistry. And then you will be in such ecosystem of uh, all the variety uh, of chemistry at Chimney Paris Tech PSL. So if you want to shape the chemistry of tomorrow and get the best experience of Paris, please join the Chimney Paris Tech program within Paris Tech admission program. Thank you and see you soon. Yeah, thank you, Feti. And now we are going to listen to Marie-Christine for a presentation of uh, Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech. So, Marie Christine. Paris Tech. <laughs> um, Paris Tech. So, I will go straight to the um, distinctive points of Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech compared to, uh, to other schools because uh, through the um, initial presentation of Paris Tech, you understood the, the strengths of our schools in terms of uh, scientific excellence, connections with the uh, company, uh, employability, small size, etc. So, I will focus on the main um, characteristics for the Ecole des Pont Paris Tech uh, related to uh, thematics, topics. So uh, Pont means bridges, as many of you know, and uh, this was the initial expertise of Ecole des Pont Paris Tech, founded in uh, 1747, it is an old school, and the initial 
uh, mission of the school was to equip the country with uh, infrastructure, uh, civil engineering, uh, transport, uh, uh, water systems, and uh, basically everything related uh, to equipment and territory. So the topics of uh, civil engineering, environment, transportation, uh, city planning, urbanism is the oldest uh, topic of expertise at Ecole des Ponts. And this is uh, still the main positioning of the school. The school works for the ecological transition, for the digital transition also. The school reports to the ministry, to the French ministry of the ecological transition. So, of course, the, um, the, the school's programs are accredited uh, by the Ministry of Higher Education, but technically the school serves the interest and the mission of the Ministry of the Ecological Transition. This means that you will find those domains are in different programs. Uh, no, I will skip on the first uh, little slide. Uh, on the on the, the main um, domains of uh, excellence of the school um, related to city, territory, civil engineering, transportation, infrastructure, divided in two departments of studies at the Pont de Pont. And uh, then the expertise, uh, the expertise expanded to applied mathematics, computer science, data sciences, um, to mechanics, uh, mechanical engineering and material sciences, then industrial engineering, robotics, logistics. And, and this, uh, this domain was also at the very beginning of the expertise of the school, economics, finance, uh, green and sustainable finance. Uh, so today this uh, green and sustainable finance is very popular. But uh, in the 18th century, the uh, economic, uh, the economic overview and the economic um, uh, stakes of an infrastructure and uh, transportation uh, project was also key. This is why it is uh, at the core of uh, the school of engineering expertise. Um, it means that you will find those departments of studies when you apply to uh, Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech. Those departments of studies uh, offer um, uh, courses in, in, in French, but uh, we also offer non-degree courses, two non-degree courses, one in green and sustainable finance, and another one taught in English in applied mathematics. Otherwise, it's French taught. When you are at uh, school, at the school, so the school is small size. You know, the, the school gathers uh, 2,000 students, which is uh, uh, small compared to, uh, uh, to university size. Half of the students are enrolled in the engineering curriculum, around uh, 800 or 1,000. Um, and the, the students work closely with the laboratories, all the labs and research centers are on campus, which is very, very, um, very, very convenient and uh, favors and helps the connection between uh, teaching, research, research based learning is, uh, is very, uh, is very uh, important. And so you will have the opportunity to do your research project in the laboratories and also on uh, equipments, equipments gathered in uh, co-innovation labs with uh, three platforms, so and platforms, uh, one platform for multi-scale observation for resilient cities, uh, a platform uh, related to urban mobility modeling, and a platform for building systems and artificial intelligence. Uh, so depending on your um, department of study, you will have to work in uh, the lab labs and also use those equipments together with the company. Those equipments are also open to companies from startups to large size companies. And uh, this is the, the opportunity to also um, to work with company and to, uh, to, to, have, um, to have connections. Uh, with company for uh, your future needs. 
Um, the school is very international, I mentioned, and someone put the question uh, the, in terms of quota. So we don't have quota, but 30% of uh, students are uh, international coming from partners, universities, from your, your universities, but also from uh, other universities as, with which we have um, partnerships. So on the campus, on campus, you will see students uh, from Europe, many, many uh, students from European uh, countries. Uh, but uh, from uh, China, from South East uh, Asia, from uh, the Americas, so North America, we have partnership with uh, the, the MIT, Georgia Tech, uh, Chicago University, for instance, and um, and also students from uh, from Africa, North Africa, and South Africa. So you will be you, you will sit uh, to uh, two students, so who one out of two. Uh, will be non-French and this is very enriching because uh, you will have to learn a lot from students uh, coming from those uh, countries. Uh, once you graduate you join the network of 22,000 alumni worldwide in uh, 14 international groups so we have a very very active alumni group in uh, Brazil, in China, uh, and uh, also in uh, countries uh, uh, who are perhaps not represented uh, here today, uh, very very helpful uh, in in your in your career life and also um, and and also to get uh, uh, tips in your countries. So international international is on campus. On the next slide, we will see that uh, there are forty five nationalities. Ten languages are taught. Uh, to, to students. Uh, we have uh, certified uh, French as a foreign language uh, center, uh, an official uh, label. So of course, depending on your level in French, at uh, entrance level, we require the, uh, the B1 level. And according to your to your level, you will you will be either enrolled in intensive uh, seminars uh, or in courses along the um, academic year. And if if necessary, we will be uh, offered by the school the opportunity to take a full time um, uh, foreign language in in, in French. Uh, four weeks uh, in in summer. If uh, you 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 need this uh, this upgrade in French as a foreign language, the school will arrange it uh, for you. So on campus, on campus, uh, I mentioned that we have all the facilities, all the uh, research centers, uh, classrooms, and so on. We also have housing, um, housing, all the residences uh, for, and, and dorms for students are on campus. Uh, all students uh, who are admitted uh, in, at Ecole Depot, when you, you are admitted, you, you have an access and we book for you uh, uh, an apartment mm. at uh, the dormitory on campus to make sure that uh, you will be housed on campus and you won't have to commute uh, between downtown Paris and, uh, and the campus. The campus is 20 minutes from the Paris uh, center, so it's very, very uh, quick and very easy to, to connect. On the school, uh, on the Canada campus, sorry, you have also incubators, uh, the D school, uh, makerspace, everything you need to prototype uh, and um, innovate. On the school, uh, you have the companies. The companies uh, visit the school and uh, they introduce their um, job uh, offers. And uh, they also teach. One third, one third of the teachers are business practitioners, which is a very high uh, ratio. Uh, I mentioned the size of the school: uh, two thousand students, uh, very small and human-sized classes uh, in each department of studies you have between 20 and 50 students. Uh, so this is the maximum size and then divided on small groups of uh, four or five uh, students. Uh, so very personalized supervision. And uh, the entry salary uh, level is around 52K euros per year. 
to give you an idea of the, the value of your diploma uh, on, uh, on the job market. I won't uh, detail more the curriculum because it's very, very similar to other schools, three academic semesters, uh, one uh, final project semester under the school supervision, which can be taken either uh, in French or outside France, but not in the country of origin. And I will mention just that because I see many, many participants uh, from uh, Brazil that uh, the Ecole des Ponts is not accessible to the uh, Paris Tech Admission Board. The, uh, the Ecole des Ponts is accessible through bilateral partnerships. So we have uh, bilateral partnerships with uh, uh, Escola Politecnica, the Universidad de São Paulo, with uh, Universidad Federal de Rio de Janeiro, with uh, Instituto Tecnológico uh, de Aeronautica, and, um, and uh, Universidad Federal de Minas Gerais. We don't have any agreement with other universities, so I prefer to put it now in order to, uh, to, to avoid confusion later. So, thank you, Maria Christine. And uh, we go now to the introduction of SPCI. Ricardo, please. Yeah, so uh, ESPCI stands for the Superior School of Physics and Chemistry, of Industrial Physics and Chemistry. And the first word is, uh, we mentioned a few times, there is no major in France. You get a diploma of an engineering school and ESPCI, you get a diploma in physics and chemistry. You cannot choose, you have to do both, okay? So if you don't like one of the two, run away from ESPCI, you're gonna be unhappy with us. If you like both, that's the place to go. Okay, so this is a very small school. We have about 300 students total. It's 85 to 95 per year. And to put that in perspective, we have 80 uh, staff teachers, professors, and assistant professors, which are complemented by about uh, 200 uh, scientists uh, uh, that will also help in the teaching. So it's almost one student per, per teacher. Officially, it's one per four, but all the, I am not a professor at ESPCI yet. I teach at ESPCI. I'm a senior scientist, so I am one of the examples of that. So you have a very high rate uh, uh, of teaching. Uh, we have 11, now we have 10, we joined two, we 11 research laboratories. A laboratory in France is not what a laboratory means elsewhere in the world. French like to be different. A laboratory in France is the equivalent of a small department. Okay, so uh, a laboratory has many laboratories inside, has many rooms with, uh, with equipment and with uh, people working in different groups. So it's 11 departments, let's say like that. Uh, we publish about a paper, now it's a paper and a half per day. There's our, there are three startups created every year and I didn't put here, but there is uh, one, um, one patent per week created at ESPCI. And it's well known by to being the home of the Curies. That's where Pierre Curie made his, uh, his uh, debut in his career. That's where he discovered piezoelectricity. And that's where together with Marie Curie, they discovered uh, radium. Uh, the, the, the lab, the Curie lab doesn't exist anymore. The radioactivity of the Curie's labs is still in place. Uh, we also had uh, just come back. We have plenty of Nobel Prizes. I have to talk about all of them. Sorry, Florence. Uh, we have also another Nobel Prize of Marie Curie, the only one who got one in physics and another one in chemistry. Uh, Frédéric Joliot Curie is an ESPCI aluminum, another Nobel Prize. Uh, Pierre Gilles de Gênes, a Nobel Prize in 1970, 1991. Sorry, 72. 72 is his work. 1991 uh, was the director of the school for over 25 years. Uh, that's also where Georges Charpak worked, has a Nobel Prize for uh, particle detectors. Uh, in uh, uh, accelerator physics, they used to have uh, bubble chambers, they became wire chambers, uh, thanks to Georges Charpak. And there is the big uh, uh, forgotten by the Nobel Committee, Paul Langevin, who deserved one. Nobody knows why he didn't get one. Uh, there are other examples in Paris Tech of people who should have one and don't. Some of them still can. I hope they will. So now we can move to the next slide. 
the training, as I mentioned, is physics and chemistry. You cannot choose, you have to do both. And just to make life a little bit harder, there's also some biology that it's put in the middle. It's not a biology school, it's biology and physiology for physics and chemistry. Okay? And the idea is that you have to get the overview and a quite deep training in all these fields and put them together in your problem solving. And to do that, we have a very particular way of, uh, of training that over half of your classes will be lab classes. Over half of your time is, a spending, is a spent inside a lab trying to do something, okay? It's not sitting in a desk, watching the teacher, putting his things in the blackboard or showing you slides. You're trying to make a chemical reaction. You're trying to make a, a, a radioactivity measurement. You're trying to make a particular radio frequency circuit. You are in the lab trying to do stuff. That's over half of our training. We can move to the next one. Uh, thank you. Uh, these are a couple, a couple, quite a few ones. Uh, startups created at the SPCI. Uh, I'm not going to enter into the details of that. You might have seen a few. We Things is the one that makes uh, smartwatches. Mine is Garmin. I should be fired from the SPCI for using a, a different smartwatch, but it's okay. Uh, Supersonic is a startup that's just got a lot of, of noise in the press, they made us an um, ultrasound machine. Uh, I'll show you an image, which is very, very performant and can do things that other cannot. You have, uh, I think, is it here? Uh, I, I, I will not mention them. You have a, a, a startup that uses microfluids to deliver medicine to specific portions of, of the cell and the body. And the main point of all these startups, all of them, no exception, is that they are multidisciplinary. They use things from physics, from chemistry, from bio biology. They try to mix things together. That's the DNA of the SPCI. We can move to the following one. Uh, I'm going to show you a few of the research results done in the SPCI so that you have an idea. We go from the really, really, really basic to the very, very applied. So let me start with the really, really basic, the bottom right corner, gravitational waves. I cannot go any more basic than that. We're trying to understand if gravitational waves exist. So we participate in the gravitational wave detector Virgo, which is in Italy, but it's an European effort that together with LIGO in the US detected the first gravitational waves a few years ago, I think 2016 or 17. Okay, So it's a prediction of Einstein's uh, general relativity theory. And they do that. It's a fascinating thing. For you who have had some practical classes in chemistry, you might see, have seen a Fourier transform interferometer for infrared spectroscopy. That's exactly what they do here. You see the two lines are the two arms of an interferometer, like a Michelson interferometer for those who do physics. And they are four kilometers long. And when a gravitational wave passes through them, because they are at right angles, one will shrink with respect to the other, and they try to detect that. And they try to detect the same shrinkage in Europe and in the US at the same time to see that it's a gravitational wave going through the Earth. Now, if you ask me, how much does it shrink? Well, it shrinks by about 1,000 of a proton diameter. That's what they have to detect, okay? So they need an accuracy of one of 10,000 of the proton diameter. And that's what they achieve. And that's what we participate in this detection. I talked about the ultra-fast ultrasound imaging earlier. Uh, that's an image on the uh, upper right corner. That's not a, 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 a bunch of flies flying around. That's the vascularity of your brain. Maybe not yours, but of the guy that proposed his brain to do this measurement. They can do a, a regular ultrasound, does three images per second, at about half a millimeter resolution. They made a machine that does 10,000 images per second at a, a micron resolution. So they can look in real time, uh, uh, blood flowing in the brain. They can look in real time, all the vascularity of your body, and then they can target very specific diseases on that. I'm not gonna go into all of them because I will run out of time, but I would like to talk about the neurofeedback. That's another thing we do, I, I love that. 
I don't like the, the bio thing, but they take uh, mice, they open the head of the mouse, of course, biologists love doing that. They put electrodes inside and they try, they put the mouse in, uh, in a maze and the mouse walks around and they learn by measuring the brain signals of the mouse, what the mouse does when the mouse turns right or left. Well, then they try to guess. Okay, and they have a success rate of 70%. 70% of the time they find right where the mouse went. And then they claim that they have a better success rate than that. It's close to 100%. The 30% they miss is because the mouse changed his mind at last time, last minute. Okay. So these are some of the examples. We have self-healing polymers, things that you cut and you put together and they stick together again. We have smart roads for smart cars. The road detects where the car is and puts the car within three millimeters in the right location. We have imaging with quantum dots. So this is research that uses vast amounts uh, 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 of collaboration between physics, chemistry, and biology. And uh, I'm not sure that I have a last slide, but uh, if, no. I, no, if I don't, so that's what you're gonna get at the SPCI. You're gonna get a training that prepares you to do this kind of, of things. And I am sure you are just willing to come to, to study with us. So I hope I'll see you next year. Thank you, Ricardo. So now Pierre will introduce uh, Institute of Tech Graduate School. So please, Pierre. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. So I will briefly introduce uh, Institute of Tech Graduate School, uh, which is obviously a school devoted to uh, optical science and engineering, or photonics, maybe if you've heard of this word. So uh, as you can see, we've been operating since a uh, little more than a century. Uh, and we've been uh, especially inspired by light, as we say, since uh, 1917. Uh, we are part of uh, Université Paris-Saclay, this larger entity, uh, more or less operating as their uh, school of uh, optics and photonics. So as you can see in, the, in this list to the right, we have a, a wide wide offer of uh, courses in uh, our field and uh, we ranges from a really basic optics let's say from uh, optical design up to uh, augmented reality and uh, image processing for instance or from uh, lasers to biophotonics from uh, quantum or atom optics up to uh, space optics U xuv optics for instance or even solar energy so we can go to the next slide please uh, so as I mentioned, we have now a rich history since uh, one century, uh, especially among the, the famous professors, let's say. The first uh, director general was Charles Fabry, uh, whom you may know if you're already active in, uh, in optics uh, from uh, Fabry Perrault or Perrault Fabry, it depends, interferometry, uh, Perrault Fabry cavities, the, the basis of the laser technologies. And uh, up to this day, we have, uh, we still have uh, Professor Alain Aspe, who is, was one of the I say, godfathers of uh, quantum uh, science and technology. And uh, nowadays, uh, when in 1917, we were created, funded in downtown Paris. In the 60s, we moved to uh, the south of Paris, uh, near uh, Orsay, let's say, 20 kilometers south of Paris. Uh, which is now uh, the Paris-Saclay campus, this uh, large entity that is, uh, has become the Paris-Saclay campus. So this is our main campus, Paris-Saclay, and then we have two branch campuses, one in the southwest of France in Bordeaux and one in the southeast of France in Saint-Étienne. So next slide, right, thank you. So uh, our research at Institute Optique, well, uh, basically it's in three research centers, obviously one on, on each campus. So to the left in blue, you have the Paris-Saclay Research Center. Uh, to the top right, you have uh, the Bordeaux uh, Research Center in green. And to the bottom, you have a saint Etienne uh, Research Center in, in yellow or orange. Uh, to, to summarize very, uh, uh, maybe a bit, uh, <laughs> to oversimplify, let's say, uh, the Paris-Saclay Research Center is a bit more towards uh, uh, the physics of light. Uh, the Bordeaux uh, Research Center a bit more towards uh, digital uh, optics. 
augmented reality, virtual reality, reality and so on. And uh, the Saint-Étienne Research Center a bit more on the non-imaging optics on um, the appearance uh, of materials and uh, uh, lighting also. So next slide, please. This will be the last one. <laughs> Uh, so about this uh, recruitment program from Paris Tech to, to join us at Institute Optique. Uh, so obviously, in terms of prerequisites, we are looking for uh, people who have a background in uh, some kind of <laughs> some way of, of uh, optical science and engineering. So it's basically people from uh, engineering physics, from applied physics, or even physics, <laughs> as long as they've been dealing with optics before a little or it can be from uh, electrical engineering or electro electronics engineering, uh, optronics, optoelectronics, as long as you've been dealing with optics too. So we have a curriculum uh, for the Master of Science Engineering, the Diplôme d'Ingénieur program, which is uh, spread out over three years, the, the bachelor final year, then master one, master two. Uh, you as international students would join for the master one year. So we do, you would do the master one and master two years uh, the whole court in the bachelor final year is in Paris-Saclay, but then it spreads out on the three campuses, uh, Paris-Saclay or Bordeaux or Saint-Étienne. Uh, for international students, we welcome you mostly on the Paris-Saclay campus for practical purposes, let's say, and it's, it's the main campus actually. In some exceptional specific cases, we can uh, also uh, have you directly on the uh, the campus in Bordeaux or Saint-Étienne, or you can start in Paris-Saclay for Master 1 and then transfer to Bordeaux or Saint-Étienne for Master 2. Uh, one of the key features of uh, Sudoptic is that uh, we have a high rate of uh, graduates uh, continuing towards a PhD, uh, one third of the students, uh, especially because uh, photonics and optics are still very uh, uh, research oriented let's say it's even for the industry for companies it's still very uh could i say uh, yes very fundamental <laughs> uh, and so we have many students uh, continuing to a phd especially phd with a company within embedded within a company in a research and development lab of a company and finally in terms of uh, employment uh, our industry, main industries are obviously uh, optics or optoelectronics and IT uh, sectors, especially linked to uh, image processing. Uh, also, the consulting firms dealing with this kind of uh, scientific topics. Uh, the transportation and mobility sector sectors, uh, in a wide acceptance of the terms, uh, it can be car manufacturers or uh, aerospace or aeronautics. And finally, uh, the defense and security industry. Well, thank you for your attention and hope to see you soon at Institute Optique. Thank you, Pierre. And now, last but not least, Myra will present Min Paris. Please, thank you. Myra. Thank you very much um, for this introduction. So uh, the last call um, here uh, I will present of the, um, the Paris Tech schools is Min Paris. So my name is Mayra Aguello. I'm the International Development and Mobility uh, Manager at the school. And um, as you saw at the beginning of the presentation, um, you have a, a lot of uh, these schools that have been uh, created a long time ago. Uh, by the by, actually, uh, Min Paris was created by the King to form and develop engineering and uh, for the mine industry. So the school has evolved since 1783, and now uh, we're more diversified. We, we have diversified the, um, the school uh, in different uh, scientific fields that uh, I will talk about later. So now uh, one of the particul particularities of the school is that we report to the Ministry of the Industry and Finance, which gives, you, gives us um, a special link uh, with the industry. Um, we are part of a research university uh, that is called Paris Sciences et Lettres, as well as um, ESPCI and uh, Chimie Paris Tech, um, that gives us uh, access to and give our students access to different services um, and institutions 
um, in this range, um, we um, are um, part of a uh, of the of the best uh, schools ranked by the Times and the QS uh, uh, World University ranking, and as well, and uh, we're present in the the top five of the schools in the national rankings. Um, as you can see in the figures, uh, we're not um, a big uh, a big school. We're a small a scale school, as the others uh, Paris schools. Um, but we still have four campuses. So the main campus in which you will uh, be studying mainly is in Paris, in the heart of Paris, and the others um, host the center, the research centers that we have in Evry, Fontainebleau, which are um, very near from Paris. And we also have uh, a campus in Sofia, Antipolis. Could we pass to the next, please? Thank you. Um, so the um, program that we're uh, promoting right now is the Master in Science and Executive Engineering, the Diplôme d'Ingénieur. Uh, but we also offer international masters, PhDs, uh, and advanced master programs. In all uh, these programs, we have um, a total of 35% of international students. Uh, well, the international uh, mindset is um, at Min Paris, and we also have one third of our, our, our teachers and researchers that are, uh, who are uh, internationals. Um, we have uh, more than 120 partner universities. That means that you will be uh, studying uh, not only with French students, uh, but also with uh, international students from all over the world. One of the um, scientific field and, and the, uh, one of the focus of the school right now is innovation and entrepreneurship uh, that it, um, is, uh, can be seen in the creation of the Department of Management, Society and Economy, um, in uh, the creation of a specialization as well for our engineers in innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we have an incubator that means that uh, we have been uh, helping uh, the creation of uh, more than 20 companies within the school. And um, uh, there is uh, um, as well uh, some focuses uh, of the center, uh, of uh, the research centers uh, within the school. Could we pass? Yes, thank you. So um, as uh, we told you, um, research uh, is uh, very important uh, in our schools and especially in MIN. Uh, we have divided in five departments um, in which uh, we have 18 research labs. So the five departments are energy and process engineering, earth sciences and environment, mathematics and complex systems, ma material and mechanics, uh, materials and mechanics, and the last one, economy management and society. Uh, our link to uh, the industry um, is a uh, also uh, through the research. And uh, this research is um, oriented to the economic world. Though, um, of course, uh, there is a strong um, scientific base uh, as well, but we'll try to, um, through the research, find solutions for the industry uh, in multiple fields. And um, we're focusing on new disciplines, on uh, some key research areas, um, as the energies of the future, the new materials, um, and also niche research areas uh, that you will be discovering as well at some point during your studies as health and environment, innovation, and competitivity. One of the, um, uh, the most um, mm, uh, striking number is as well that we have, uh, we are the first university in France in the amount of contractual research. That means that um, um, most of our research is finance and uh, the strong link that we have with the industry helps our researchers and our students uh, to be um, focused on the research and be financed as well. Can I pass through? So um, for the next, yes, uh, talking about the learning environment, 
So uh, when you will arrive um, and you will be admitted at the program um, of engineering at Min Paris, um, basically uh, the two years um, of program because you arrive for the graduate years of um, of the the diploma of engineering. Uh, this program has been renewed the last years, and uh, because we wanted to. Um, give the students more flexibility and give them a tailor-made program. That means that, of course, you have uh, uh, common courses at the beginning. Um, that's why we need our students to have a strong background in fundamental courses, in mathematics, mechanics, physics. That's very important. And you will see as well during uh, the admission um, procedure that we actually have also an oral examination in math and physics for the students who wants to, to join um, in Paris, because we really want to make sure that you have the same, almost the same uh, level as the, the very high selected students that we have in our school. Um, and um, we give you uh, as well, because we think it's important, um, a multidisciplinary approach. That is that you will have mentory courses in social sciences, you will have mentor languages classes, as well as sport. Um, you will uh, have options uh, to focus in economy and management, in innovation and entrepreneurship. So the first year uh, of your stay in MIN, for example, um, is uh, divided in, in four modules. So two modules are engineering projects, for example, you will have a project in uh, mechatronics that you will do uh, with in a, in a group with other students. Um, and you will have as well another module of research uh, that is divided in two weeks of courses and eight weeks uh, in a lab. That means that this lab could be um, whether here in Paris or you will have to travel uh, to the other research uh, campuses that we have. Um, and work in your team as well on, um, as an example, I can talk about the project of applied economics that we uh, um, offer to the students or on energy transition as well. And the last uh, part of the first year uh, in France for you would be a mandatory internship. Uh, during all the, that's a, a very important part of uh, our, um, program the internships uh, and you will have uh, all the, the help as well from the alumni from uh, the student services to have uh, many uh, opportunities um, to do internships uh, whether it's in France or internationally. Um, as well, we offer between the first and the second year in France, you, you could have um, an opportunity to do a gap year if you want to, to do more uh, internship and more professional experience before um, going to the third year in which you will have uh, to customize a little bit more your curriculum um, with uh, one of the 19 fields of specialization that we offer. That's for the second, the, the second year and the last year of the Diploma of Engineering um, that ends with another uh, long internship um, before you get your diploma. As well, um, an important um, information is uh, for you to know that um, more than half of our students, 60% six per, uh, of our students are employed before the graduation. Uh, whether it's in France or back in their countries. Um, and the average um, salary is uh, 51k euros for a first position. And what we want uh, you to, uh, to become, it's uh, whether you're in uh, the energy sector or um, another, um, any, any sector of a kind, uh, any kind of companies, we want you to become uh, managers and um, engineers that are ready uh, for um, all the challenges uh, that we're living right now, as well as uh, another um, nice thing, because I mentioned that we are a small scale school, you will have a, a very easy contact with the teachers and the researchers 
um, and as well as all the services, the administrative services of the school. Can we pass to the last um, slide, please? Sure. So um, basically, uh, for um, more practical uh, things here, um, you will be helped uh, once you're admitted. Uh, because uh, you will have a spot com uh, completely booked for you, a room in our residence that is um, five minutes walking from the school, which is in the really heart of um, Paris and uh, the heart of a very vibrant cultural life um, environment. A lot of universities are um, around. Uh, you also have other schools of Paris Tech, uh, which are our neighbors. Um, this will help you uh, as well to, um, uh, to settle um, with all the activities that we offer. Another particularity of, um, of engineering schools um, is the number of student councils that you have, the student associations, very uh, variated. Uh, you will have a lot of, um, an offer of sports, uh, very uh, very um, large and um, all at your disposal um, to help you with uh, uh, administrative uh, um, procedures for healthcare, visa, and as well as scholarships, as 80% uh, of our international students are uh, coming with scholarships. So um, this will, could, uh, could not be uh, a very a big uh, issue um, thanks to our, our foundation and the alumni that um, fund uh, the, the scholarships for our international students. So do not hesitate uh, to ask uh, questions. You saw the emails of the schools and uh, I'm, I'm willing to, um, to answer all of the questions as well on MinParitech and thank you very much. This is the end. Thank you very much, all of you, for this uh, session. So uh, we have already two questions. Actually, um, chemistry in SPCI without physics, is it possible? Ricardo? Triple no. <laughs> no, no and no. You have no choice. If you don't but, like physics, run away from your SPCI. Yeah, but uh, chemistry, you can uh, enter different schools. Ke I mean, uh, you, you can, if you are, uh, it depends on the question, okay? If you want to do chemistry in the SPCI, it's no. If you have only done chemistry in your life, but you're good in physics and you think you can handle it, then yes, we can take you. But you will have to no. do physics with us. Yeah, actually, it was uh, contrary. He had a uh, focus on physics, but he didn't have chemistry. But I think it's the same. It's quite the same. He cannot come to his PCI. He needs to have both. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't need to have both. You have to do both. It's different. Yeah. Okay? We accept chemists. We accept physicists. We accept mathematicians. But yeah. when they come here, it's everything. Yeah. No exceptions. Okay. Thank you. And then there is another question. So Pierre is now answering about plasma physics. Do we have plasma physics in other schools uh, than uh, Institute of Peak or how is it in SPCI? You don't have it or? No, okay. And then Myra, so uh, maybe I can, um, uh, I can uh, share the, the slide with the contact where you can see all, sc all schools. Uh, just one thing, Florence. I read the, the, the question. The question is, yeah. she has no background in chemistry. Can she still come? Yes, but you have to do chemistry here. Yeah. But it's okay. If you don't, if you don't know chemistry, we'll teach you. Well, sort of. Not as well as Ecole de Chimie but we will teach you some. Yeah. And here you have all the uh, contact points for uh, the schools. So Min Paris International at Min Paris Tech uh, to join Myra, for instance. And yes, there is no questions anymore. 
do you have any? So, so I think if you are, if we don't have any questions anymore, maybe, oh, there is one. Um, there is a question in discussion, Florence. Uh, okay, yes. I would like to know if the program is interested in a collab with more universities in another opportunity because I'm studying engineer at bioprocess and biotechnology at one of Unix University that work with bioengineer at Brazil. It depends, I would say, no, Artemio. Yeah, can Brazil? I reply? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Isabella, thanks for your interest. It's probable that you come from UNESP. Please write me to Brazil uh, admission at uh, paritech point, uh, point, um, FR, and we might to, to explore uh, your, your mobility project in deep. Yeah. Okay. And Don't worry, write me, write me. Your project interests me. Don't worry. And... Uh... Can someone uh, explain uh, what's the daily life of a student in you know, your school? When does it begin with the courses? So usually the classes uh, starts at 9.30 uh, till uh, 5 p.m. Uh, and it's a full day, every day from Monday to Friday. And then you can have social activity in the evenings uh, and on the weekends. When it comes to uh, my mean uh, SPCI and Chimi Paritech, we have a large number of activities, sports and outdoor activity through the PSL uh, organization and clubs, etc. So there is a life, social life, beside the uh, five days per week devoted to uh, chemistry or any kind of courses or classes. So, and you have a, a rich student uh, association life, and it's very important because uh, a lot of international students focus actually on the courses because it's very important, but association life is also important because it's a way to develop your soft skills. So it's part of the training, actually. Um, there is another question, but which is mandatory to study in French when we are going for a master's program? I'm curious to know for the shoot specialties in English. So it's mandatory to, to learn French because the programs of the engineering uh, curricula are mostly in French, but we have also uh, programs in English and it depends on the schools. But yeah. English and French are mandatory. And you have a selection of master degrees, uh, master programs on our website, study with us, and you can check some of them are in French, some of them in English. And then you contact the persons in charge of a master degree. So other questions? No? So I think we can say we are finished now. So thank you very much for your participation to stay uh, with us uh, two hours and a half. Uh, you will have the PPT and uh, we will try to we'll register the presentation actually, I hope so. And uh, uh, we will try to upload, download the presentation, the webinar on our YouTube channel or Bilibili in China. So stay tuned. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send an email to the president of the jury of a country you are uh, concerned or to, to the school you are interested in, we will answer the questions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.